The beginning of a new month is always so exciting because it means I get to fill out the reading stats for the previous one. Let's get set up for March in my reading journal and also have an in-depth look at everything I read in February. Hey, it's Erin. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. February's actually been a very good month for reading for me, which is kind of funny because while it was happening, I didn't feel like I was reading that much, but I guess I was. So here's a little look through what I have done for February. I've recorded this video over the course of a few days. So this is actually before I've put quite a bit of information in and this is kind of like the second last week of February that we're doing this part. I have set up some review spreads for some of the books that I've finished and I'm halfway through this one for All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton. But I actually want to start by going all the way back to the beginning of the book and filling out some of the yearly trackers at the start. I haven't put any information for any of my February reads on my overall book tracker yet, so we're going to jump in and do that. I've actually read everything that I put on my maybe next list, which is kind of insane. Apparently taking the pressure off calling it TBR really works for me, so that's a nice feeling. Also, I had some of them already reserved through the library, so you know when there's a queue and you have to wait for a book and it's finally your turn, you kind of want to make sure that you're prioritizing that, so I did that for a few of them. Like, I have to read this and return it so someone else can read it. It's been a pretty mixed bag, the February reads. They've been all over the place from some fantasy, some romanticy, some normal romance. I've had some like mystery and contemporary fiction in there as well. It's been a nice variety, I feel. It's, it's been fun to dip my toe in a lot of different genres. So that was something I've really enjoyed in February. I did also have one, maybe, maybe we'll call it one and a half books that I chose not to finish for February, but only one of them was like, I definitely will not be finishing this book. The other one I started on audiobook and I wasn't enjoying the narrators. So I was like, I'm going to read this on ebook, but I don't have it on ebook yet. So <laughs> that will come later, I guess. All will be revealed in time. <laughs> I also went to the Brisbane Akatar Starfall themed ball last weekend and I thought it would be fun to show you a little bit of that too, so stick around for that towards the end of the video. My goal tracker here needs some updating. I have the numbers on the list over here, which makes it a really great reference. And I'm using colors that correspond to the theme for that monthly setup so that I can see which month was that which numbers of books, if that makes sense. I'm using the 192 Tombow Jewel Brush Pen for this one because it is my very favorite green Tombow. It's that perfect intersection of like a soft sage green. It's got a touch of olive in it, so it works really well for plants, I guess. It's just beautiful. I really like it. Moving on to the series tracker. Now, this is something I may not have left enough room for myself to do the whole year. I did the left page, which is all I had, I think, in my previous journal. Maybe it was two pages as well, I can't remember. Those were all series that I'd already started and I'd left the right page completely empty for any new series I started this year and then I've accidentally pretty much filled it up just in the first two months. These are all series that I've started this year and I've only read the first book of each of them but they're all series that I'd like to continue so <laughs> I wanted to make sure there was a space for them. I like referring to Goodreads for this information because they list out all of the books with the number next to the title so you can kind of work out the correct order for everything. I'm wondering now if I should really try and focus on the series that I've started and try not to start anything new, but if I do decide to start new things and I just don't have any space left on this page, then I will probably just start a new series tracker later on in the book that I will refer to between the two of them, I guess. But this is really good information to have. Now I know for my next reading journal, I'll probably want four pages for this. So let's remember that for next time. finished the first book in each of these series so I'm going to go ahead and color in the box for the first book in each series so that I know I can refer to it. Occasionally I get things wrong and I forget about a novella or something so I read things out of order. I didn't know there was a prequel for the Murderbot Diaries so I'll have to go back to that one. And there are a couple of things on my maybe next overall list for the year that I want to cross off. One over here in the spooky season section which I thought I'd read really early that I just wasn't vibing and one that I completed that's in the romance section. We'll talk about them later. The Wake Up Call is the one I started on audio book and wasn't enjoying the narrators so I'm gonna finish that one on ebook. Now I need to transfer some of this information over into my February tracker pages. We will come back to the reading stats page once the month is finished and fill that out properly because at the time I'm doing this the month is not finished but it, it will be when you're watching this. I'll actually do a sneaky little update the morning that this video is going up so it will all be very current by the time we get there. 
The books I have done review spreads for already, I've also done the core pile ratings for those and that gives me the star rating, so I'm just transferring that information from the review spreads over to my maybe next and my February reads pages. For my January pages equivalent of these, I was including the dates read as well, but because that information is in the progress tracker up here, I decided not to continue doing that. And you see that funny little mark the green pen has left up here? That's because of the stamp pad I used for all of my frames and my lettering throughout this setup. It's actually an oil-based stamp pad and the pens are water-based markers, so they don't play very nicely together. And I kind of hate it. It's made me think I never want to use that stamp pad ever again. So things to keep in mind. I'm also not totally stoked with the way I set up this progress calendar. I just didn't plan out where books were going to go very well. So sometimes there'll be something that needs to cross several weeks and I'm putting it, for instance, here on the second row underneath the numbers, but then there isn't room to put it on that same row underneath here. So I've had to move it to the bottom, but it's the same color. So you can see, and I'm writing the title on it as well, of course. So you can see that it's the same book. It just annoys me that it's not on the same row. We're going to live with it. It's fine. Let's print some book covers. I've gone ahead and made myself a little list of the book covers that I would need to print and how many times, and I use my HP Sprocket mini printer for this. It's very handy, sometimes it's very glitchy, but it was pretty good for me this time around. In January it was, we were not having a good time. But I've pleased the Sprocket gods this time, I guess, so that's lucky. If you want to see exactly how I do this, I have a short about it that I'll link in the description or up in the top right corner here so you can see how I print my book covers with the Sprocket in case you have one and you want to do the same thing. You can also just print them on sticker paper or on normal paper and stick it into your journal. That's totally fine too. Or you could not have book covers. I like how they look, but they are a lot of fussing around. So if you want a very no nonsense reading journal, you could just not have book covers in it and you would save yourself a lot of time. I would also save myself a lot of time if I used my ink pad again, but because of how it messed with my markers on the other side of the page, I'm not doing it. So I'm just going back to using a pen to color in my stamp. That works for me. I have no problem with it. Now we're going to transfer some more star ratings into these spaces now that the book covers are there for me to do that. I actually realized watching this back that I've put the wrong star rating for The Serpent and the Wings of Night. Here I've only done three and a half stars. It should have been four and a half. So don't worry, we will fix that later. I'm very sorry to The Serpent and the Wings of Night. You deserve better. I'm also moving over my core pile ratings so that when it comes time to work out my standout, my number one book for the month of February, I can do that really easily. And that is the book that will make it into my book bracket to go into battle with the other books that I read in this first half of the year. If you saw last week's video, you'll know I've been looking for new and novel ways to make journaling engaging for me again. My reading journal's not actually a problem, I love using it, but I've been in a bit of a slump with my bullet journal and I have this designated thoughts and feelings journal that I pretty much never touch. I know how beneficial journaling can be as a mindfulness practice and I really want to find a way to incorporate it into my routine. So I took this class called Visual Journaling, Drawing Your Feelings with Jordan Sondler and it was such a fresh and unexpected perspective on journaling for me. Jordan guides you through four exercises to get you started with prompts around what inspires you, what you hate, what you want, and what you fear with no expectation or pressure on the outcome. It's just a task that lets you process these things while you doodle about them. It was so freeing. Drawing my feelings felt much faster than trying to find words for them. And somehow the idea of someone finding and reading my doodle diary rather than a log of all of my deepest, darkest thoughts in words is way less intimidating. I found this revelation class on Skillshare, the world's largest online learning community where creatives of all skill levels gather to discover, learn and grow. Skillshare offer thousands of classes across every creative field imaginable. I've taken stacks of lettering and calligraphy and watercolor classes on Skillshare, but they also have classes on illustration and music, film, video, photography, graphic design. I never know where to start when I'm trying to jump into something new, but thankfully Skillshare's learning paths are the solution to that problem. They're curated classes from a range of teachers arranged in the perfect order so you can learn new skills and build on them and come away at the end with stacks of new knowledge and understanding. That makes them the perfect way to get from novice to pro, whatever you're learning, and you learn by doing it. So at the end of a learning path, you have a series of completed projects that you made throughout the classes, which can serve as the beginning of a body of work or just as a starting point that you can look back on and see your improvement. 
The Draw Your Feelings class I took is the first in a learning path called Reconnect to Yourself with Guided Journaling, and I'm already partway into the second class. I kind of considered myself a bit of an informed journaler already, but these classes are really inviting me to see journaling through a different lens and try things I've never even considered before in my journals. It's not too late to set a goal or make a resolution for the year, or to get back on track for a goal you might have let slip. Whether it's picking up a new hobby or rekindling an old one, starting a side hustle or just taking better care of yourself, you can start learning and growing today. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks to Skillshare for showing me there's always something new to learn and for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into some new review spreads, but first I had to make some more core pile stickers because I had used all the ones I made at the beginning of the year. I really missed them. I had to do some manual core pile listing on a couple of my spreads and I did not like it. So I made some more and I do have this available. A few of you guys asked on my last video. So I've made this available as a little printable. I have a version that's just one of the core pile outlines in case you have something like the Fomemo MO2 mini printer, which I have a discount code for if you want something like that for your journal. Or I have the version like I'm using here, which has 20 of the core pile sticker on a single A4 sheet. So if you want to be really efficient and print it on a bigger printer, you can do that too. I've got links to both of those down in the description below in case you want to get your hands on either version. And I've also got links to as much of the stationery as I can include. On the reading journal videos, I use a lot of different stuff. So it's hard for me to link to everything because there is a character limit. And can I just say, All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton, this man is a poet. I know he writes prose, but it is so beautiful and lilting and gorgeous. Wonderful Australian stories. This one was set in World War II in Darwin, and I've gone with little elements of stationery that kind of imitate the gold in the rocks that was kind of a big part of the story. The main character is just such a wholesome, wonderful young girl, and it was a very emotional read. There's a lot of turmoil, there's a lot of darkness, but there's also a lot of hope and joy, so... I definitely recommend it, one of my highest rated reads for February. The page we've moved on to on the right here is for A Song of Sin and Salvation by L.H. Blake, and I'm using some stationery here that I really didn't think I'd ever have the opportunity to use. I got it a while ago, and I was not expecting it to have lots of religious iconography, but the story of this book is a young girl who is part of a, mm, let's go with religious cult. It's set in the 80s, and I think the main characters are maybe a little bit inspired by Chrissy and Eddie Munson from Stranger Things, like the, the rock and roll guy and the perfect girl, you know? No magic vibes here though, no like monsters and stuff, it's just a love story and a story of self-discovery and coming of age. This one's on Kindle Unlimited, it's by an indie author, it's been self-published I believe? And look, indie books can be kind of hit or miss. I think the writing on this one lets it down a little bit, but the plot is very good. The story is told well enough that I was still engaged, I still finished it, I had a reasonably good time. I think the church in this particular story is uh, not a good example of healthy practice of religion, which is kind of the point, you know, the main character, girly Rebecca, is discovering some things about herself and maybe that she doesn't agree with, but something I thought was really beautiful, and this is coming from me as a person who is not at all religious, is that she actually doesn't lose her faith throughout the story. She doesn't kind of come out and be like, the church is bad. She comes out and is like, that church is bad, but God is good. And I just thought that was really nice. As always, there are spoilers in the text parts of my review pages, so don't read them if you don't want spoilers. I wanted to make sure I had a little bit of James, the male main character represented here, and he talks quite a bit in the book about this beautiful Gibson SG that he has his eye on, and I noticed on the book cover he's actually playing a Fender Stratocaster, which is a completely different guitar, so I wanted to make sure he's got the right one. And like, I know it doesn't have to be perfect and it's a very cute cover, but I was like, let's give the boy his metal guitar, shall we? Because the Strat is not a metal guitar. <laughs> anyway, this one's falling into the three and a half star area of the core pile rating, so that's what I'm going to give it here. I'm still using the very first iteration of the core pile rating system here. I've adapted it myself a little bit so that I could have half and quarter star ratings to be a bit more specific, but I've recently realized that G from the book roast who invented this system has updated it, so I have some research to do. I need to find out how she's changed it and probably incorporate those changes myself because that seems like a good idea. This next spread, if you've been following me on Instagram, you will have heard a little bit about this book 
already, or a series of books, I wasn't really sure how to categorize this one within my journal. This is The Improbable Meet Cute, which is a collection of Valentine's Day themed short stories by some of the really big, heavy hitting romance authors. I put on my Instagram stories like, how do you guys think I should count this towards my end of year total reading goal? Because Goodreads had it set up as separate stories. So my Goodreads goal at the moment has put me much closer to my 100 books goal for the year, whereas Storygraph had the option to list it as a single book, which is honestly much closer to how I've been thinking of it as a concept in my mind. I had it as a single book through Audible and I listened to it as though it was a single book. I didn't like break up the stories or anything. So I've decided to count it as one for my reading goal and as one on my list of books read within my journal. So if you are following me on Goodreads and it looks like I'm way closer to my reading goal than I should be, this is why <laughs> I'm counting them differently across Storygraph and Goodreads. And you know, if we get to the end of the year and I'm not close to hundred books on Storygraph, but I am on Goodreads, then at least I can feel good about being closer to my goal, but it doesn't really matter. All right, it doesn't matter, it's all semantics. With that said, these books are all quite different. Some of them I resonated with way more than others. The very first one in the series, The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren, is exactly my kind of rom-com story. It is so beautiful. It's like a you've got mail kind of a thing where the two main characters accidentally email each other on Valentine's Day and then for the memes they continue to do so and then kind of like develop a relationship. It was so beautiful. I loved it so much. On the flip side, a couple of the stories I did not love and I couldn't remember the names of some of the characters when I went into a journal about them here and write my little reviews. I thought I'd just do one spread and review each book kind of in a short form version here. So I'm doing book covers for each one and a general page to collate them all. And I'm listening to the next Throne of Glass book while I do this, which is kind of a strange combo. Anyway, I got onto Goodreads to go through the reviews there and try and work out the names of some of the characters that I'd forgotten. And oh my God, there are some nasty, nasty reviews on these books, even the ones that I loved. I was like, oh, wow, people really don't like things. And I don't usually read a lot of Goodreads reviews. So I was like, this is a little disheartening. I think I will stay out of the reviews going forward unless they are written by people I know. For me personally, I don't actually write reviews on Goodreads or on Storygraph. I will give a star rating, which is usually because it kind of forces you to when you finish a book, right? I will give it like a gut reaction star rating that might not completely line up with what I end up giving it based on the Corpile rating in my own journal. Maybe I should go back through and update them so they're all correct, but Really the only time I use the text part of Storygraph is if I'm saying that I didn't finish a book at what point and if there's like a really obvious reason I will list it there but I don't really use them so I don't tend to read them and now I'm shocked. <laughs> But if you're in the mood for some adorable fluffy romance, and a couple of these stories are a little bit spicy too, then I definitely recommend this collection. It's so easy to listen to, so easy to read. Just don't make the mistake of buying a single book separately when you can get them all for the one price because I made that mistake and I, I got one of them accidentally separately and I had to return it and then get the collection through Audible instead. I also had this sticker sheet that was completely perfect for this spread and I was really determined to completely use it up. So I spent a while just putting tiny little sparkles on the page. I decided not to give this book a core pile rating the way that I would any other book because it's kind of a series of short stories. So I gave each one a rating out of five just based on the vibes. And I didn't check, to be honest, I didn't check my maths here, but they averaged out to around about a four star rating. So that's what I'm giving it. And I am assigning it a core pile number, but I'm not doing that with the usual mathematical system because each of the books was written by a different author about different characters. It just doesn't really apply in this case. So I'm referring to the four star range instead for the core pile rating and just assigning it where I think it should go. <laughs> it's not very scientific, but that's what I'm doing for this one. So that's how it's gonna go. At this point I decided I wanted to add the book that I decided not to finish to my February reads page so that I could note down that I did give it a go at what point I decided not to finish it and make sure that it's also on my progress calendar tracker too. This one is called Spookily Yours and it's a witch kind of small town romance story. It's supposed to be like a witch falls in love with a devil who was in the shape of a cat and that sounds right up my alley but the writing really let it down to the point where I was like no I can't do this so that's a shame. 
And to indicate that I decided not to finish it on the calendar, I've put a little X at the end of the line, which a few of you guys suggested on one of my previous videos where I wasn't sure what to do with DNF books, so thank you for that. We're moving on to another spread now for another book that I have completed. This one is The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yaros, which is the same author as the Empyrean Fourth Wing Iron Flame series, and it's not really a secret that I really like those books. I know they're not for everyone, but they are for me. I knew Rebecca Yaros had a background in romance and so I thought it would be fun to try one of her romance books and my friend Rachel recommended this one to me because she really loved it. She said it was a bit of a tearjerker and I love a book that makes me cry. I'm a bit of a masochist like that. I really enjoyed it. This one has dual timelines. Partially it's set during World War II with a couple who meet during the war and fall in love and then there's the timeline that is the present day which follows that woman from World War II's great-granddaughter and the author who was finishing her grandmother's final book that she never finished. Hence the title. So I feel like Rebecca Yaros is a very good storyteller, but not so much an excellent writer. I think her writing is fine. I don't think it's bad by any means, but I don't feel like she's one of my favorites, you know? What I will say in favor of this book is that there is a twist that I absolutely did not see coming at all. It completely caught me by surprise, and I love when that happens. I think this might be one of the books that people talk about a lot on BookTok. I don't spend a great deal of time on BookTok. I know people tend to get their hopes dashed when they read something that sounds really good that they found on BookTok. This one I think is actually quite good. I gave it four stars, so there you go. Got to move that over to the overall tracker so I can see when I need to work out what my top read of the year is. And now we're gonna get into the March tracker pages. I'm going with kind of a dusky pink theme here, so I've got out everything I own that might possibly fit with that. I'm not gonna use all of those things, but I'm gonna use most of them. So first of all, I wanna swatch my pink pens and see what works best with these colors. I'm really enjoying collage layouts in my reading journal at the moment because I'm doing so much painting in my personal bullet journal. I've kind of missed playing with washi tape and stickers, so I'm enjoying doing that a lot here. I'm lettering March on some separate paper so that I can play with the positioning of it. It's a really good way to make sure you like where all of your elements sit in the end is to play with them first before you commit anything to the page, which you can't really do with things like stamps or lettering unless you put them on separate pieces of paper and use them like a sticker. I feel like I actually don't have that much stationery right now. I just got rid of a whole lot of stuff. So I'm working with a pretty nice little capsule collection of stationery, which is excellent. Although I did feel a little limited. I was like, I've used all of this stuff before, but that's fine. It's good to use up your things, right? We're actually running a no buy challenge in my Discord server at the moment with my lovely channel members where we're doing a little challenge every week of March. So we can use up some of the stuff that's in our stash and not buy anything else. So mostly here I'm using some PET tape from the Washi Tape Shop. This one is the Frost Bloom tape, previously appeared in my February giveaway journal setup. And I'm pairing it up with another rose PET tape that somebody gave me, actually lovely Judy at Sticker Hangs gave me this one. And I don't know where it's from, it's just like a little sample off of her roll. So if I can find out, I will link it, but I'm not totally sure. If you guys know, please let me know. The left page is just for the cover page. I just enjoy doing that. It's a fun time. And the right page is where I'm putting my reading stats. I'm using this little library card that came with the Archer and Olive library subscription box last year. And I'm stamping my categories that I wanna track for my reading stats directly onto that. And then I'm going to decorate all around. On the left page for the cover, I was thinking along the lines of when you buy flowers from a florist and they come in a little arrangement that's in a box, so kind of recreating that sort of idea. And on the right page here, I just really wanted them to explode out from behind the reading stats piece of paper and just keep things looking consistent across the two pages. I didn't go in with any of this planned out. I really enjoy just winging it with my reading journal and I think that's part of why it's so much fun. <laughs> I'm so happy with this reading stats page. I love the way it's come together, but I felt like there was a little bit too much space underneath on the left page now, so just had to balance that out. We can turn the page and we'll move on to, this is where I put what I have up until now called my maybe next. I'm changing it to reading forecast and this was not my idea. I got this from Ainsley on TikTok. She had a TikTok where she mentioned that her mood changes and she is a mood reader. Therefore, like the weather, her TBR can also change. So she calls it her reading forecast. And I was like, that's genius. I love it so much. So I'm trialing that one for this month. I'm trying to choose just four books for my reading forecast, maybe next TBR, whatever you want to call it, because that's enough of a kind of a heading for the month, I feel like. And it'll be things that I already have on hold through the library or things that I've had on my list for a while, maybe that I want to try to prioritize. And that actually doesn't include book club books either because they are set. I'm going to read the book club books 
whether or not I want to. <laughs> because these pages end up pretty busy with all the book covers I like to stick on them, and the book covers obviously do not have a cohesive theme amongst them, so it can get a bit chaotic, I like to try to keep the decoration pretty minimal. That's really helpful in keeping the page from looking completely overwhelming, but it's also helpful as far as making sure that there's enough room for me to track all of the books that I might read in the month, because I have been reading quite a few. I'm kind of averaging out like 9 to 10 lately, and sometimes obviously there are books that I start and don't finish and I want to put those on there too, so there's got to be room for a lot of book covers here, so this is a good way to make sure that that can happen. I'm moving my calendar back to the right page this time because I just feel like it's easier to draw things out on the right page. As a right-handed person, it's a bit more comfortable. Whereas the left page, I'm really just sticking down book covers and putting star rating stamps under them and writing a corpile number so it doesn't have to be as involved as drawing out the dates on the progress calendar, you know? The washi tape I'm using here is from the washi tape shop, but I have to apologize because it's not available anymore. It's from the Italian Summer 1983 set, which I also used last month a little bit, and I've used in my like November in my bullet journal last year. It's absolutely gorgeous and I wish they would bring it back because I started using it right at the tail end of its lifespan unfortunately, which means a lot of people have been like I want that and then I can't I can't arrange that for them, which is unfortunate. The calendar I'm setting up here has boxes that are four spaces by four spaces and I'm in a B5 notebook so I have a lot of page space here. If you're using an A5 you might find that your progress calendar if you're doing one takes up an entire page by itself. Typically when I'm using this, I have a row represent a single book, and it would be very rare for me to be reading more than two books at a time, three would kind of be the maximum, so having four rows gives me a lot of flexibility when I'm using this page, although I do want to make sure I'm using it better than I have on my February spread because I just didn't think about it for books that needed to go across more than one week. I have them on different rows. It's just, it's a little frustrating, but I'm not going to do it again for March because I'm aware of the problem now, which means I can fix it. I lettered all my headings for this spread on sticker paper that was left over from the core pile off cuts, so that was really handy. I can just peel those off and stick them down and that's a lot less fussing around than always having to use glue tape. And I think I've worked out the right spacing now for my books where I can have, if I'm not adding dates red as well, which helps that takes up more page space, I can fit four books horizontally across a page and I've got the spacing down pretty well vertically now, so I may not need the space that's underneath the progress tracker on the right there for more book covers. I don't think I will, but in case I do, it's there. And if I don't, I might use it for something like a standout book for the month instead. I've got The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes in my reading forecast maybe next TBR section because I have it on loan through the library as an audiobook already, so the timing just works out for that one. It's the next one in the series. I read the first one last month, so that works. I've got Cherish by Tracy Wolf there. That's the last one currently. I don't know if there's going to be more. I haven't looked into it, but it's from the Crave series. As we saw with the series tracker earlier, I have a lot of series I would like to get through, so I thought it would be good to prioritize something from a series that I'm really close to finishing. And that one's also available on audiobook through my library, so that's very helpful. Likewise, Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, which is the next one in the Murderbot Diary series. Again, another series that I've started this year. Those ones are quite short, so they're really easy to knock over quickly, which is nice. Sometimes you need that, right? And I've also got Bride by Ali Hazelwood. Now, I really enjoy Ali Hazelwood books, even if some of them seem like the same book over again, but I am excited to try this one because Vampire Romance, bit different. The Page Mages Book Club book for March is What the River Knows by Isabel Ivanes. So if you want to read that along with us and have a chat about it, you can jump into the description, hit the join link down there and become a channel member on the Page Mages level. We're having our chat for the Page Mages book from February, which was What You Were Looking For is in the Library by Michiko Aoyama. We're having that tomorrow, so I'm really excited for that because it's going to be an interesting one. I feel like we all have very mixed feelings about the book or very different opinions about the book, and that makes for the best discussions. The Page Mages is so much fun, my little book club through my Discord server, so I like to celebrate it a bit, give it its own spread in the journal that matches with the themed pages. I have a sneaky feeling that pink and florals aren't going to work so well with what the river knows, but that's okay, I'm doing it anyway. When we have our catch-up call where we all discuss the book that we read for the previous month, I like to have some predetermined questions so we can kind of have a guided discussion and keep us all on track while we're discussing the book. So I like to have a full double page spread for my page majors book so I can put those questions on one side and just a general like brain dump blurb thoughts about the book on the other. 
And for that reason, I'm trying to keep my decoration kind of minimal here as well, partly because I'd like to be able to adapt it to somewhat fit the theme of the book, although pink and florals, once again, maybe not the vibe this time. And also so I have space to record all of the things, all of the thoughts, all of the feelings, all of the questions, and then answer the questions for myself so I know what I'm talking about. Since most of my book review pages are just a single page, I typically do the smaller version of the cover for those, but because I've got so much room on this spread, I like to do the big full size one. And we only printed one this time. Thank you to my sprocket for doing what it's supposed to do. A few of you guys suggested that I put any extra book covers that it prints that I don't actually have a place for in a bit of a extra print graveyard at the back of the journal. So I've started doing that. Thank you for that tip. I really like it. Gotta add my star rating stamp to all of these reading forecast books. I do also have another book club called The Literary Ladies that I am part of. I don't run this one, I'm just part of it. But we haven't chosen our book yet for the month of March, so I will add their page once I know what it is. At this point, February is over, so I can jump back into my February tracker pages and my annual tracker pages and make sure that everything's updated and find out all of my stats, which is a part I really enjoy about the reading journaling process, is just looking at the stats at the end of a month. I'm still halfway through Empire of Storms, which is the next one in the Throne of Glass series, so that's going on the progress tracker here, but I haven't finished it, so no star ratings or anything yet. And I did finish the seventh book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. It's called Barbarian's Mate, just on the last day of February, so I can add that into my February reads page as well. And I think I was being pretty realistic by leaving one extra space here because that ended up being exactly how many books I finished in February, so that's incredibly satisfying. This one extra page can be for Barbarian's Mate, I will realize later when I go back to my series tracker to work out which number in the series this book actually is that I think I've missed two novellas in between. That's okay, it's fine. This is actually the third Ice Planet Barbarians book that I've read this year and I'm kind of running out of ways to decorate the pages because they're all set in the same place. It's, you know, an icy planet. So there's not that much wintry stuff that I own because I live in a place that doesn't really experience winter very strongly. So I don't know, I just keep using the same stuff each time. Actually, these little snowflake strips were from the Sticky Swan Lake sticker set, which is kind of interesting because it's very different to some of the other stuff that's in that set, but it works really well for an Ice Planet Barbarians page. If you're not familiar with the Ice Planet Barbarian series, it is a monster romance genre kind of novel, which means these women get stranded on a foreign planet and end up mating with the inhabitants. And that is a little bit weird, yes, but they are pretty fun. I'm starting to get a bit bored seven books in. I'm not sure how much more of the series I'm going to want to continue anytime soon, but they are very quick and easy to read. You can kind of knock one over in a day because they're sort of short. They're not particularly wonderful writing, but they're readable, so, you know, that's my review. They're also all on Kindle Unlimited, which in my girl mathing brain makes them all free. So there that is, because I was going to pay for Kindle Unlimited anyway. Might as well read some monster romance. Now I've got a star rating and a corpile rating for Barbarian's Mate. Let's flip back to the February Reads page and update that information here so it's all together. And look at this, this is so nice, this is completed. And The Serpent in the Wings of Night was my number one read for the month of February, which means it goes in this little frame here for the standout book. And it's also going to have the honor of appearing in my book bracket, which is kind of funny because the book is about somebody going through some trials in a fantasy world and succeeding. But this one, unfortunately, its corpile rating is a flat eight. The corpile rating was 8.28 for Ruthless Vows. So Ruthless Vows is actually the one that's going to go through to the next round and not the Serpent and the Wings of Night. Very sorry to Araya. Is it Araya? I think it's technically supposed to be pronounced Araya, the main character of that series, but uh, I was reading it on ebook and I was calling her Araya and I think that's prettier, so I'm going to stick to it. I'm finding out here that the book prints that I make with my HP sprocket when I divide it into the collage system, so there's four to a page, are actually bigger than the sizes I've allocated for my book bracket, so that's going to be interesting. We'll put, this is just convenient, it fits very nicely there. And now let's use my story graph stats to fill out the rest of my stats page. I've completed 10 books this month. Apparently I read 3,942 pages, which is kind of wild. I'm using a little frame to make a pie chart here. This is the format that I read books in, so it was mostly audiobook. 
I'm actually surprised by that. I thought ebook was going to come out on top this month because that was how I was enjoying reading books the most this month. I really thought I was reading more ebooks than audiobooks, but the stats tell me otherwise, so that's interesting. I ended up with 60% audiobooks and 40% ebooks this time. I actually went back through my Storygraph stats and made sure I had the correct star ratings versus my core pile ratings for everything. So my average rating for the month has ended up being 3.73, which seems kind of low, but I guess it's almost four stars, so it's not probably too far off. This is why I want to look further into the core pile updates that G has made so that I know that I'm using the best version of the system, you know? I've got a pretty varied genre list this time. Romance is at the top, which is not abnormal for me, but YA, mystery, thriller, fantasy, there's a lot of stuff going on there that I don't normally read, and that's because of book clubs, mostly. We need to add Barbarian's Mate over here on my overall book list for the year. This one is filling up much faster than I expected it to. And that means we can also add it to the goal list. I am gonna fill this one in green because it's still in February and I wanted to assign the pink that I'm going to use for March as well but I got distracted and I started coloring in the first book and I have not finished a book for March yet because at the time that I'm recording this it's only been March for 13 hours so <laughs> stop getting ahead of yourself Erin. I've also got to add the page numbers to each one of these pages because I'm keeping an index in this book which I don't do in most of my journals but I'm doing it in this one and I think it's helpful. Obviously, this Archer and Olive journal did not come with pre-printed page numbers because I wouldn't have to do this if it did. I don't really mind whether a journal has page numbers or not, and I don't mind adding them myself. If I'm just doing it once a month like this, it really doesn't take that long. It's not that big of a task. So on the index at the beginning, I'm just logging the pages that are for review spreads kind of generally, not one for each review spread, but where the month's review spreads are generally, and then also the tracker pages for each month generally. Once we've got that done, we'll have a little flip through and then I'm going to show you what I got up to at Brisbane Starfall Ball. My reading journal is all set up for March. I'm so excited. I'm so proud of the reading that I got done in February. Not got done. That makes it sound like something that I was assigned to do. I enjoyed reading the things that I read in February. I must know what your favourite book was in February. The best book that you read doesn't have to have come out in February. And also I wanted to remind you if you're based in Brisbane or the surrounding areas of Queensland, Australia, and you'd like to learn about reading journaling from me, I have two reading journaling workshops happening in March at Stash World in Fortitude Valley. And there's some information at a link in the description about those two in case you'd like to come along. Now for something completely different, the very last part of this video is just a little look at my experience with the Brisbane Starfall Ball that happened this past weekend. It was the first time anything like this has happened in Australia, so we're really lucky that it happened in Brisbane. Normally we aren't the first ones to get things, which for us to have this first is pretty exciting. And people travelled from all over the country and even from New Zealand for it. It wasn't just the balls, which there were two of, it was also a bunch of other events inspired by the books. I didn't take part in the stair challenge or the archery or a high tea, but I did join in this mind stilling class. Sorry about my terrible camera work, trying to be mindful of people's privacy. There was a big merch sale at the hotel that was the official hotel for the event. And this is not that hotel, this is Customs House where the ball was held. These are the stickers I brought home. They're gonna make my reading journal level up a little bit. I've already read the Akatar books. I haven't read Crescent City yet, but I have a sticker ready now for when I do. Then we had a Valaris themed paint and sip class, which I love paint and sip classes. This one was maybe a little too hard for some of us, myself included. The teacher really just ripped through this class really fast and I don't feel like her instructions were very clear at all, but I don't mind how my painting came out. They gave us two brushes and they both kind of sucked, so I didn't end up adding the stars to the top of the mountain. Those three stars over Ramiel is kind of what really makes it distinctive as the mountain from Akatar. So I'm gonna add those myself at home with markers or my own paints, I think. But the teacher's version looked incredible. I think it was based off a picture that maybe somebody has made online, I'm not sure. Here's mine in the end, um, sideways, sorry about that. And these are the two examples that the teacher painted. I think we should have done the more simplified one, but we did the hard one on the right. The ridiculous thing is, now I have to get this frame on the bus. Oh, and it's starting to rain. Everyone's going to cover. And then there was the ball and the vibes were amazing. But it was also super packed and that was a little bit overwhelming for this little introvert. Thankfully, I had my partner Chris with me and he's so wonderful, he even wore ears and a crown. <laughs> he's the best. Fairies in a car. Hello car fairy. I had so much fun getting all dressed up for this and I felt like I looked really nice. Everybody in the room was kind of like instantly friends with everyone because we had this book series in common and people had even made friendship bracelets Taylor Swift style and were handing them out and it was just so wholesome. They had people playing the characters, we got Nesta there and the surreal with a magic eight ball which is kind of the best. 
I would have loved to have got photos with the characters, but unfortunately I spent so long in the line for the 360 camera that I didn't get a chance, which is a shame. We got Tamlin there, we got Moore and Amran coming down, and of course we've got the High Lord and Lady of the Night Court. And if you recognize that guy, he's from the Shannara Chronicles, I think, he's an actor. They had a little choreographed dance that they were teaching us when they opened the dance floor, which would have been really fun if there was more space in the room, but when you've got everybody in full skirts like this, it's very easy to trip over people, and I kind of got knocked over. Uh, so that could have been more fun than it was, but still a nice idea. Overall, it was pretty good. I don't know if I'd do it again, but I'm glad that I did it this time. On that note, since that was kind of a little bit of vlog at the end of the video, here is a link to another partially vlog video. This is my travel journal from when I went to Europe at the beginning of last year. And underneath that is a playlist of all my reading journal videos in case you'd like to keep watching. Catch you next week. Mm -hmm.